Hey guys and welcome back to Biolog. I hope you are having a great day and a great week. In this video, we are going to be looking at some IGCSE past paper questions based on the topic of excretion. So we're going to look at some really important topics and important concepts that you need to know under the topic of excretion in IGCSE and some important questions that can be detailed around these uh, different concepts in your final exam, which is going to be happening in May, June. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do, make sure to like, share and subscribe to biologue and without further ado let's begin into this video looking at the first question people with kidney disease are often treated in renal dialysis clinics so this question is about dialysis their blood passes through tubes linked with a special membrane uh, for about three hours so it's now state two waste substances waste substances look at how i'm highlighting the keywords or circling the keywords that's extremely important in biology exams and especially in igcse state two waste substances that are removed from the blood by dialysis main thing why do you do dialysis because the person's kidneys are not working they are unable to filter out waste products of metabolism like urea correct they're unable to filter that out from the blood so a very common answer here would be urea that's your first answer the second one could possibly be either another form of urea or um, you know because urea itself we can say consists of uric acid and creatinine so creatinine is another thing that you could write here but i typically think of this as uh, extra excess salts sorry extra extra salts or excess salts so you could say excess of salts for example you have to write an example here very important because excess of salt salts itself like there are so many different types of salts you never know what salt needs to be removed and what is actually useful for the body and it is kept in the blood so you need to write the type of salts that are you know possibly going to be removed so when i think of salt obviously the most common one is common table salt so that's uh, nacl so you can say salts for example uh NaCl and in that you can say either salts or ions so ions can be another thing so that's actually Na plus and Cl minus all right now kidney patients may be given a kidney transplant they may be given a kidney transplant state one advantage and one disadvantage of kidney transplants compared with dialysis this is in the last portion of your textbook and it is extremely important that you know this because this is something that actually gets asked very very often so advantage of kidney transplant is that number one uh, patients don't need to return to the clinic right patients don't need to return to return to the clinic for dialysis because typically if, if they undergo dialysis they have to return to the clinic at least three times per week so uh, patients don't need to go to the clinic three times per week unlike in dialysis unlike in dialysis all right so that's a good advantage you could write another thing is um, i always like to actually keep a list of the mark scheme uh, answers so in this i remember when i was doing my igcse i would write this answer this specific answer would have been written in a document so i would write all of the uh, points uh, the mark scheme mentioned because this was something i knew could be easily asked and uh, it's definitely something i saw that was recurring in a lot of the past papers and plus my teacher had also mentioned that it was a little bit important that's why so next thing moving on to the disadvantage the disadvantage is obviously for kidney transplant because you're inserting something new into the body there is a high risk of immune rejection correct there is a high risk of rejection by the person's immune system immune rejection you can either say immune rejection or rejection by the person's immune system by the person's immune system and so you will need uh, these drugs or basically these uh, sort of medicines called immunosuppressants which are used to um, nullify the effect of this immune rejection so by the person's immune system so uh, there is a need of a need of immunosuppressants okay immunosuppressants or certain drugs 
or medicines or whatever you want to write all right moving on to the next one also sorry if my handwriting is not so great currently not at a desk that's probably why so moving on to the next one figure 5.1 shows a cross section of a kidney uh, this is not a very easy cross section so we already know that the outer portion i like to think of it like this the outer portion is called the cortex so the outer portion is the renal cortex you actually don't need to write the word renal at all um you can just write cortex if you like the inner portion i remember it as renal medulla so inner portion is renal medulla okay and then this portion here this actually does um itself further sort of divide and then it actually contains certain blood vessels in more detailed diagrams you can actually see the um, renal artery and the renal vein so overall if you don't see that it is actually called the ureter uh, ureter yes <laughs> sorry it's been some time since i've done um, igcc questions so name the structures labeled e f and g the e as we can see is the outer one so that's cortex the renal cortex f as we can see is the inner one which is medulla and g is the ureter all right now always something i feel like you can get confused is is the um, because these two words are so similar i actually did get a little bit confused when i uh, first learned it i was always very confused between ureter uterus and um, another term in excretion i don't quite remember it but yes the, these two terms make sure that you're actually you know learning the difference between them and make sure you're continuously um making sure that you're actually saying it out loud so that you don't confuse in between terms because igcc is very specific you can't write you know you ureter when you're supposed to write uterus and you can't write uterus when you're supposed to write ureter correct so be careful of that the next thing is explain the function of the renal capsule in the kidney now this is extremely extremely important renal capsule we already know that uh, this is used in ultra filtration correct from your textbook you would know that it is used in ultra filtration it is used in ultra filtration all right why because the uh, renal capsule it actually consists of renal capsule consists of multiple blood vessels or multiple capillaries you can say multiple capillaries tied in a knot so because it is so much of uh, you know complication and because these vessels are so near to each other it is actually under high pressure so these blood vessels are under high pressure these blood vessels are under high pressure all right they are under high pressure all right so the this high blood pressure now what it does is that this high blood pressure allows the filtrate to pass through the uh, capsule itself so this entire knot of uh, all of the capillaries and things like that this is what is called glomerulus all right glomerulus so the renal capsule how it looks is something like this so the renal capsule is not a great diagram but we'll work with it for now this is your renal capsule this is your renal capsule and this is your glomerulus all right so there is that so you need to say that the high blood pressure it allows the filtrate filtrate to pass through through the glomerulus and out of the renal capsule out of the renal capsule the second thing you could write is that um the function of the renal capsule right so you can write what exactly it helps to filter out so what does this filtrate contain this uh, filtrate will not contain anything that is too big to pass through the glomerulus walls the capillary walls so you can say that the renal capsule it uh, contains the glomerulus which helps to ensure contains the glomerulus which is a knot of blood vessels where the proteins cannot move out of it because they are too big now because they are too big they will actually remain within the blood in the capillaries in the blood of the capillaries 
now remember this is actually three marks so like i said i like to write uh, one more point so this i feel like if you know you have certain specific terms like the actual biological term that that itself is one mark so like that this should probably be one mark then reading capsule consists of multiple capillary side and not so these are under high pressure that's another point allows filtrate to pass through the renal capsule are uh, talking about the filtrate is another point and how what actually this filtrate contains or what it does not contain is what we have written here so that is your fourth point so i always like like to write one more point more than what is actually asked for here three points are minimum required but i like to write one more all right looking into the next one glucose is reabsorbed back into the blood by active transport define the term active transport this i'm telling you it is something that can come not only in excretion but also in the first few chapters that you must have uh, learned in igcse which is all about transport right transport methods like active transport um, you know osmosis diffusion etc actually when you're older and you get into a little bit of a higher level like a levels you will actually learn about different types of diffusion like facilitated diffusion and you will learn about bulk transport as well like um, exocytosis and endocytosis but obviously don't worry about it now since you're an igcse student so define active transport define active transport you need to talk about how active transport is the movement of now this is something you have to memorize unfortunately if you can understand it and then memorize it but um, very specific keywords are needed so make sure you just know those keywords it is the movement movement of molecules from a region of low concentration to high concentration low concentration to high concentration or you can say against a concentration gradient this is probably a better term against the concentration gradient all right using energy in the form of atp from respiration in the form of atp from respiration again three points must have been covered let us check so you got active transport is movement of molecules from high to low or sorry low to high concentration that is one um second point is that it is either again so this is actually if you think about it, this point and this point is the same and then you have using energy in the form of atp from respiration that's your second point so you will get two points here but if you want to add something else i would say you can say that it uses uh using sorry using carrier proteins present in cell membranes all right looking at the next one give one example other than glucose of a substance that is reabsorbed into the blood from the renal tube you you can say uh, typically certain salts are needed for the body to function and for metabolism to happen so you can say certain salts or ions or a safer option i would also say is just writing water all right so that's that all right this next question is also a pretty common one explain how a dialysis machine filters blood so in this firstly we need to talk about the system itself so the dialysis machine consists of consists of a partially permeable uh, membrane okay consists of a partially or semi permeable membrane whatever you want to write partially permeable membrane right and through this membrane it's what um, the molecules move around so basically it contains a partially permeable membrane through which substances or molecules like urea and excess salts pass through diffusion excess salts pass through via the process of diffusion all right so there is that now the concentration uh, gradient is also something you have to talk about because you mentioned diffusion so that's the next point so the second point is that this happens from uh this happens from 
a low to a high concentration or against the concentration gradient this happens against the concentration gradient okay third point is that um, the again you can mention about the concentration of substances for example for uh, glucose the concentration is the same in the blood of the patient and in the dialysis fluid or dialysate uh, and in the dialysate right, the fourth thing you could mention is that things that are um, too difficult to move through the membrane that is proteins so proteins or blood cells do not pass through all right these ones are actually too large to move across the membrane so they are too large to move across the membrane so they do not move and the last thing is that once the dialysis is over the fresh dialysate is always added so fresh dialysis fluid or fresh dialysate is always added okay to the dialysis machine to replace the old one all right looking at the next thing kidney transplants are again um, most common organ transplants advantages of kidney transplant this is something we have already done uh, if you guys would like i can just uh, mention the points so basically one is that the patient does not have to go to uh, the clinic again and again so no regular clinic visits so there's no regular clinic visits then uh, you can say that there's also lesser chance that the person will get sick less chance that person will get sick will get sick sick frequently the term frequently i believe is very important so less uh, tiredness or you can say less chances of nausea uh, less headaches etc there's also no uh, changes to the diet or no restrictions too many restrictions on the diet are not there to the diet of the person all right so those are your uh, three points all right looking at this one before a kidney is transplanted it is important to match the tissue type of the donor with the tissue type of the recipient obviously yes why because uh, there are chances of immune rejection correct this is done to this is done to avoid the uh, rejection of the uh, kidney from the uh, person's immune system sorry about that person's immune system or basically it prevents the person's immune system immune system from rejecting the transplanted kidney all right so there's that all right let's look at the next question so the kidneys remove metabolic waste from the liquid part of blood the liquid part of blood name the liquid part of blood the liquid part of blood is blood plasma so pretty much the plasma is what has dissolved salts and this is where all of the blood cells etc are uh, present so the blood contains this uh, liquid part called blood plasma as well as the dissolved salts as well as the uh, blood cells and things like that within it um, the process that involves removing metabolic waste from the body that is excretion that's what this entire video is about right excretion and excretory system figure 1.1 shows a kidney tubule and its associated blood vessels Describe the functions of A to B or A and B. Sorry, what is A? A is the glomerulus, so the knot of blood vessels that we talked about. That's or knot of capillaries, you can say. And B is the area of I think it's almost the loop of Henle, but uh, specifically, it's more so the area where uh, selective reabsorption happens. So A. is definitely your uh, glomerulus and describe the function only they're not asking you to name the uh, parts they're actually asking you to just describe the functions so that itself is enough so a it is where ultra filtration occurs 
अल्ट्रा फिल्ट्रेशन आकर्स सो वट हैपन इन अल्ट्रा फिल्ट्रेशन सो स्मॉल मॉलिक्यूल्स राइट सो स्मॉल मॉलिक्यूल्स पास आउट ऑफ द ब्लड इन द कैपलरीज इट पासिस आउट ऑफ द ब्लड इन द कैपलरीज इन टू द बोमस कैप्स्यूल ऑफ रीनल कैप्स्यूल इन टू द रीनल कैप्स्यूल into the renal capsule all right it's basically from the glomerulus to the renal capsule all right part b uh, the b one is basically let's check this is where selective reabsorption happens so you can write this is where selective reabsorption happens so certain substances or certain molecules like salts they are reabsorbed back into the blood One second, reabsorption happens. So, certain substances like salts, important salts, are reabsorbed back into the blood or into the capillaries. Are reabsorbed back into the the blood of the capillaries. the capillaries and the glomerulus all right in the glomerulus all right so that's your answer moving on to the next one table 1.1 shows the concentration of some substances in the blood at x fluid at y and urine at z uh glucose so this is what is shown you have a table name the substance that has molecules that are too large to pass through obviously Now, when you look at this, uh, it's obvious that it is protein. Proteins are too large to pass through the walls of the capillary in the glomerulus, and hence they're too large to pass uh, into the Bowman's renal capsule. Um, is all reabsorbed in the kidney? All reabsorbed in the kidney. Very important. All reabsorbed in the kidney means nothing should be present. Nothing of that substance should be present in the urea or you know in the excretory products. So this is definitely glucose. and metabolic waste product we already know this this is urine or urea because here it's mentioned urea so you got to write urea all right explain what the concentration of sodium ions and urea sodium ions and urea again um, underline the important terms are greater at x and at y at x and at sorry at not x or uh, z sorry at z and at y at z and at y so In this case, you can see that the uh, main things that they've asked is sodium ions and urea. So let's highlight that sodium ions and urea. Look at the concentrations here. That's one and that's two. So over here for sodium ions, fluid at Y, it uh, has increased from here, right? Increased. But here again, and here again for urea, it has increased in the urine. So basically one thing you have to say is that um the water which is actually being reabsorbed has been reabsorbed um into the blood back again by osmosis correct so there is actually no change in the sodium ions but the volume of the water is lesser that is why the concentration very important look at this it actually says concentration so this means that if the concentration of sodium ions is higher in the urine compared to in the fluid it means that there must have been a difference in the concentration of water correct because a very important thing that is reabsorbed back into the blood by selective reabsorption is water so it means that the concentrations are greater at uh, z than at y this is because water is reabsorbed this is because water is reabsorbed back into the blood by selective reabsorption reabsorbed back into the blood by selective reabsorption all right this is reabsorbed back into the blood by selective reabsorption so the concentration of sodium is lesser and how does this reabsorption happen this happens by osmosis sorry brother by a process called 
osmosis back into the glomerulus all right so there is actually no change in sodium ions in no change in the amount of sodium ions but of sodium ions but since the concentration of water decreases at z the concentration of sodium ions and urea and urea in the urine increases at z all right so that's your answer Moving on to the next one, people who have acute kidney failure are given dialysis treatment. In dialysis machine, the blood flows through narrow tubes, partially made made from partially permeable uh, membranes, and uh, this is surrounded by a dialysis fluid. Dialysis fluid contains sodium ions. Using the information in the tables uh, to suggest the concentration of sodium ions that should be in the fluid and give your um, reason for your answer. All right, so. concentration of sodium ions remember that some sodium ions will need to be removed but more so it is actually the uh, same because a lot of the sodium ions will need to be retained within the blood itself and they typically if the kidneys were working normally they would have to be reabsorbed correct so what i would say is actually it is uh, 0.35 because the concentration should typically remain the same between the fluid between the dialysis fluid and the fluid which is actually the blood of the patient so that is 0.35 that's your answer reason is because it should be the same concentration should be the same concentration in the dialysis fluid as the as the concentration of these ions in the blood of the patient this is in order to not allow for any net movement so that so that there is no no net movement of ions no net movement and hence no loss or gain of sodium ions all right two components of blood that are not in the dialysis fluid are proteins obviously so that's basically uh, proteins any plasma proteins you can write so uh, you can write maybe fibrinogen or uh, other types of plasma proteins the one i can remember as of now is fibrinogen so i'm going to write that so that's fibrinogen as well as some blood cells correct so blood cells like platelets like platelets heparin all right heparin is added to the blood before it returns to the body from the dialysis machine heparin prevents a person's blood from from clotting describe the process of blood clotting now this is something you will learn in immunology if you are taking the exam very soon for igcse you would have already learned it so make sure you know this process of blood clotting how it happens is is uh, by a cell called platelets so the platelets are basically blood cells they are blood cells that break down or basically convert they convert a soluble plasma protein now very important some key terms here soluble plasma protein or it's soluble to insoluble so soluble plasma protein fibrinogen fibrinogen into an insoluble plasma protein called fibrin or fibrin whatever you want to call it an insoluble plasma protein called fibrin or fibrin all right called fibrin so this fibrin now creates a mesh all right this creates a mesh or a network which helps to trap helps to trap the blood cells trap the red blood cells very important all right and it prevents them from flowing out so prevents excess loss of blood prevents excess loss of if you would like and you know if this is something you have learned before you can definitely add the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin via the uh, enzyme thrombokinase i believe 
and uh, calcium ions are also secreted in this case yeah so there is that so yeah this is something that definitely uh, did take me a little bit of time to remember because I've not done IGCSE in long time at these questions so uh, yeah this is something you should definitely know and uh, the mark scheme answer is very very good because it's quite comprehensive for this so do go through that as well this is now this particular answer I wanted to frame it uh, very nicely so make sure you know this make sure you write this down and learn the mark scheme steps for this because this is also a question that comes uh, about very very regularly so you should definitely know all of the steps that they require you to write right let's look at this one define the term excretion now this is something so common it's literally probably the one of the most um, one of the most common uh, definitions that can come in IGCSE biology so make sure you know your definitions really well they are free marks literally you get three marks for free so uh, excretion is the removal of waste products of metabolism is the removal of waste products of metabolism and substances in excess of requirements from the body in the form of urine all right looking at the next one this is a figure shows the section of a kidney using label lines and letters given and the letters given all right so this is f r and u this is the letters show where filtration occurs filtration remember this is ultra filtration ultra filtration occurs in the uh, glomerulus and the glomerulus is present within the um, cortex so basically this is where it is these things these things are very important this is basically where uh, the ultra filtration happens so you can mark it here if you would like so that's which letter it's f correct so this is where ultra filtration happens the renal artery the renal artery is over here so basically the renal artery i how i remember it is like um the artery is the uh, blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart and so it carries it towards the other organs so if i think of kidney as an organ the renal artery is the one that carries the blood away from the heart but towards the other organ so towards the kidney so it is this one all right this is the renal um, artery so that is what letter r all right so um, next thing is where urine passes the bladder this is the ureter so then basically after the um, filtration and the selective reabsorption and everything happens it goes to the bladder via this so that is your u all right there is the ureter actually this is called ureter all right describe the process of filtration in the kidney so here again like i said this uh, question i believe we did before sorry about that we did before so this is you need to talk about the blood pressure being high so this high blood pressure in the uh, glomerulus right this is what allows for filtration to happen and this is where molecules will pass through the walls of the capillaries through the walls of the capillaries into the renal capsule all right into the bowmans or renal capsule sorry about the handwriting um, i'm just gonna write the points for you guys because we already did this question then you gotta write what things do not go out into the renal capsule that is proteins proteins do not go out why because they are too big to pass through the walls of the capillaries but what things do go out and do become a part of the filtrate this is the um, urea or uric acid etc these are the things that actually pass and become a part of the filtrate all right moving on to the last thing name the processes resulting in the reabsorption of glucose so of glucose and uh, water so the reabsorption of uh, water is definitely selective reabsorption but if we don't want to think of selective because selective reabsorption can be for both correct so if we want to get more specific the processes in the reabsorption because it already says it is selective reabsorption 
what is the processes within selective reabsorption that helps to take it up uh, or actually take it back into the blood this uh, for water it should be osmosis obviously that is the process that actually makes water move into another cell glucose it should be active transport all right yeah so those are the answers that will be it for today's video guys this is the last question we're gonna do if you guys like this video make sure to like share and subscribe to biolog for more such igcsc videos i'm gonna try and cover um every single topic in igcsc biology as i possibly can so make sure to stay tuned for that growing playlist we already have 11 videos uh, and with this it's gonna be 12 so there are a lot more uh, gonna that there's a lot more videos that are gonna come up so make sure you stay tuned for that like, share and subscribe to Biolog and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.